When was the last time you thought about how pure drinking water runs from the tap? What lies behind the tap and beyond? Perhaps tireless, hard-working otters are forming a bucket brigade. No way. We need thousands of kilometers of pipelines, the work of hundreds of people, and numerous pumps to provide clean and healthy drinking water for billions of people. But how? Just a few minutes and everything will be clear. A water distribution network is made of steel, cement, or polymer pipes. Our drinking water flows through thousands of junctions before it arrives to every household and industrial customer. The pressure and flow rate of water is regulated by active elements, such as the pressure reducing valves or flow control valves. And if the pipe breaks somewhere, the damaged section must be shut off for repair. So there are several isolation valves in the network. The enormous size of water networks is well illustrated by the fact that the pipe network of Budapest would reach to Nepal if laid down in a straight line on the Earth's surface. But how and when did these networks grow so large? After all, they couldn't have been built by otters. No, definitely not. The first Hungarian water distribution networks were built in the late 19th century. But in the world, there were such systems much earlier. The city of Philadelphia was supplied with running water through cast iron pipelines in 1804. The Boston network, using wooden pipes, became operational even earlier, in 1652. The ancient Incas, Persians, or Romans also built their water distribution networks. Archaeologists found Roman aqueducts, for example, at Aquincum, now part of Budapest. Wells existed already 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, along the Tigris and Euphrates. The Kanats of Tehran supplied the city for nearly 2,700 years with water. This network has been operational for the longest time. Okay, but where does the water come from today? In some places, from radial collector wells, but their arms do not look like the tentacles of those alien otters. Such collector wells are widely applied in Hungary. The gravelly, sandy beds of rivers or lakes filter the living waters, and thereafter the long arms of the wells in the neighborhood can drain off fresh water, almost ready for drinking. But the conditions are not so favorable everywhere. In mountainous areas, water must be drawn off from deeper layers. Aquifers are like large, water-filled halls hidden inside the mountains. The extent of further filtering and treatment depends largely on the method by which we obtain the water. After all, nobody wants to drink some kind of muddy or stinky tap water, which might even cause diseases. So the first step of water treatment is the filtering with finer and finer filters. They remove the larger, sometimes even visible, impurities. The following aeration and clarification removes the inorganic components, like iron or manganese. Finally, a last filtering clears away all remaining unwanted substances. Then, we have to eliminate all organic contamination. Traditionally, the tap water was made harmless by adding chlorine that kills bacteria and other pathogens. Nowadays, the first step is that we kill those harmful, sometimes lethal, organisms with UV light in a fatal aqua disco party. So we can save a lot of chlorine, or in other words, money. Moreover, this kind of tap water may taste better. But some chlorine is still needed, because we have to preserve the quality of water also in the pipeline system from contamination. Our wells have been extracting life-giving water for thousands of years, but the water finally returns to nature, some of it directly. Just think of broken pipes or irrigation, while the rest indirectly with the wastewater. The drinking water used up by the people is collected by the sewage network. The wastewater is cleaned by filtering, clarifying, and chemical treatments, and then released back into nature. Here we have, of course, strict regulations to keep our earth clean, as far as possible. So that was the man-made part of the water cycle. But there is a natural water cycle as well. The bulk, more than 96%, of the earth's water supply is contained by the seas and the oceans. Furthermore, 
two-thirds of nature's fresh water is trapped in ice, partly in the polar caps, partly in glaciers. This is 2.5% of our global water supply. So only 1% of Earth's total water stock is available for human use. The evaporation transfers salt-free water into the atmosphere from the tremendous surface of oceans. This vapor precipitates and forms clouds of different forms and sizes, depending on the current temperature, atmospheric pressure, and humidity. Then the water falls back to the surface, in the form of rain, snow, and ice, or a mixture of these. The falling water is absorbed in seconds by the thirsty ground, the rivers, and the streams. So all water will eventually return to the seas of the world. Life-giving fresh water must be handled wisely and sparingly to save it for the future. According to statistics, every Hungarian uses roughly 100 liters of drinking water a day. This covers their cooking, washing, cleaning, and also watering. Although our country is fairly average in terms of direct water consumption per capita in the world, there is still room for improvement. For example, we can collect rainwater for our plants instead of using tap water, even in cities. Neglecting the repair of dripping taps or toilets is not a good idea. The same is also true for water pipes. It's shocking, but today's pipelines deliver drinking water sometimes with a loss of over 40% to the consumer. Evaluating the water consumption of a new washing machine or dishwasher is also a smart idea before replacing household appliances. But in addition to our daily consumption, we waste much more water indirectly and unnoticed. For example, it's quite shocking that more than 15 tons of water is needed to produce a single kilo of beef. So a low meat diet is not only favorable for our health, but also protects our environment indirectly. As we develop our cities and villages, it is worth preserving as many natural green areas as possible because they are an active part of the water cycle. They drain rainfall and help clean the air. Anyone who wants smart water management must also deal wisely with waste. Just one liter of used oil can pollute one million liters of natural water if poured down the drain. So those who want a healthy environment and a livable planet must carefully manage their hazardous and selective waste.